Hi everyone, welcome back to AP Physics C, energy, not energy, momentum and impulse. Today we're going to be talking about elastic collisions. Key things to know about elastic collisions is kinetic energy is conserved as well as the momentum. All right, let's look into these problems. So example number 26, a, a car of mass 1689 kilogram heads, uh, collides head on with a parked car. So initial velocity is zero for this one. A uh, parked truck of mass 2000 kilograms. So uh, spring mountain bumpers ensure that the collision is essentially elastic. If the velocity of the truck is 17 kilometers in the same direction as a car's initial velocity after collision, what was the initial speed of the car? So we don't know, we're looking for what this initial velocity of the car is. I'm going to call this V1, and we'll, let's call this V2, and then we'll call this one V1 final, which we don't know, and then V2 final, okay? All right, uh, let's do all this. V1, okay. Okay, so let's figure this out. First, let's look at momentum initial is equal to momentum final. So let's look at everything before the crash and then after the crash. So before the crash, we have this 1689 kilogram car moving with a velocity that we don't know. We have the other truck, 2000 kilograms, moving that is parked, so it has an initial velocity of zero. And then after the crash, we have this 1689 car moving with a velocity that we don't know. And then the other car that has 2000 kilograms moves with a velocity of 17 kilometers an hour. All right. So there's a little bit of a problem here. We don't know V1 and we don't know V1 final. Let's try to clean this up a little bit so we can make this a little easier. So if we have 1689 V1 is equal to 1689 V1 final plus uh, 2000 times 17. So let's put that into my calculator, 2000. Oops, I should be able to just do that on my own, 34,000. Okay, 34,000, okay. So one key thing to know, and this is only for elastic collisions, we should know that kinetic energy is conserved, right? In an elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. Because of that, we can derive a formula that we should know that V1 plus V1 final is equal to V2 plus V2 final, okay? This is not on your formula sheet usually, but we should, know, we should be able to derive this. I'm not going to go through that derivation, but you can find it online if you'd like to. Uh, so let's write more of this. We don't know what V1 is. We don't know what V1 final is. But we do know V2 at the beginning is 0. And we do know that V2 final is 17. So let's kind of plug all this in. We should know that V1 final is equal to 17 minus V1. That being the case, what we can do is we can do substitution because now we have two formulas and two equations to find these two unknown val uh, variables. So let's use substitution. We're going to do 1689 V1 is equal to 1689 times 17 minus V1, and then plus 34,000. Uh, okay, simplify one more time. 1689 V1 is equal to, and now I'm going to FOIL this out, 1689 times 17, 28,713. Uh, minus 1689 V1 plus 34,000. Okay, let me simplify this a little bit more. I'm going to put this to the other side. So 1689 plus 1689 will give me 33,378 uh, V1. And add these two together, 28,713 plus 34,000 gives me 62. 713. Now I can find what V1 is, do a little bit of algebra, and we get V1 is equal, uh, sorry, sorry, 62713 divided by 3378, uh, 18.57 kilometers an hour. Okay? So at the very beginning, this car is hitting this parked car at 18.57 kilometers an hour. All right, let's move on. All right, let's look at this example, example 28. A 620 gram object traveling at 2.1 meters per second collides head on with a 320 gram object traveling the opposite direction at 3.8 meters per second. If the collision is perfectly elastic, what is the change in kinetic energy of the 620 gram object? 
One thing we should know right off the bat is right after this collides, we don't know what the final velocity of this blue ball is, and we don't know what the final velocity is of this triangle diamond shape thingy. Okay. Uh, so let's try to solve this. Let's first look at the momentum before they collide and the momentum after they collide. So we have this 0.62 kilogram object going 2.1 meters per second before it collides. And then we have this 0.32 kilogram object going 3.8 meters per second in the opposite direction before they collide. After they collide, we have this 0.62 object uh, with a velocity that we don't know and the 0.32 object with, with a velocity that we don't know. So let's try to simplify this. 0.62 times 2.1 uh, minus 0.32 times 3.8. And we should get uh, point. 0 0.086 is equal to 0.62 B1F plus 0.32 B2F. All right, now that we have this, we notice we have two unknowns. Remember at this point, we need two equations when we have two unknowns. And remember, when, we only, when we're dealing with elastic, uh, elastic collisions, we can use this formula. V1 plus V1F is equal to V2 plus V2F. So let's figure this out. V1 is equal to 2.1. V1F, we don't know. V2, oops, we do know what V2 is. V2 is negative 3.8. And V2F, we don't know. So now we should, we should be able to find that V2F is equal to, I'm going to bring this to the other side. Oh, all right, maybe the solve for, yeah, V2F is going to be equal to 5.9 plus V1F which is going to give us V2F. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in right there. So let's see if we could simplify all this out. 0 0.086 is equal to 0.62 V1F plus 0.32 V2F being 5.9 plus V1F. Let's foil this out. 0 0.086 is equal to 0.62 V1F plus 0.32 times 5.9, which gives me 1.89 plus uh, 0.32 V1F. Okay, now let me simplify one more time. I'm going to bring this to the other side. 0 0.086 minus 1.89, uh, negative 1.8 is equal to uh, 0.94 V1F. So now let's figure out what this V1F is equal to. Uh, we're going to do 1.8, negative 1.8, divided by 0.94, and we get negative 1.92 meters per second. So we should know after this collides, it's going to go to the left 1.92 meters per second. But uh, what we're looking for is the change in kinetic energy of the 620, kilogram, uh, 620 gram object. <clears throat> so let's find the change in kinetic energy. Let's find the kinetic energy final first. So one half mass of the blue ball, 0.62. Velocity of the blue ball after the collision, negative 1.92 squared. So let's figure that out. 1.92 squared times 0.1. get 1.14 joules. And then before the collision, let's see, one half mass, 0.62, and it's going with a speed of 2.1 squared. Okay, so 2.1 squared times 0.31. <clears throat> and we get 1.37 joules. So we see that there is a loss of around 0.23 joules. Loss, okay? So you guys might be a little confused. You might think, wait, there shouldn't be a change in kinetic energy when there's an elastic collision. And that's true, but there should not be a change in kinetic energy for the system. For the whole system, there won't be a change in kinetic energy, but that doesn't mean that for the individual objects that are colliding that there's no change in kinetic energy. There is going to be a change in kinetic energy for both of these objects. But within the system, the kinetic energy doesn't change, okay? But for this one individual object, it does change, okay? So hopefully you guys weren't tricked by that. Okay, moving on. 
A bowling ball has a velocity v when it collides with the ping pong ball that is at rest. The velocity of the bowling ball is virtually unaffected by the collision. What will be the speed of the ping pong ball? Okay, so we're going to be looking at these as if they're elastic collisions. And what we should know is when there are elastic collisions and where things are virtually unaffected, we're going to be thinking about this formula here. V1 plus V1 final is equal to V2 plus V2 final. Okay, so we're going to call this bowling ball V1, and we're going to call this V1 final, and call this bowling, uh, ping pong ball V2 and V2 final. So we're looking for this V2 final. So V1 bowling ball is just, we're going to call that, it has a velocity V. After the collision, the bowling ball is pretty much unaffected, so it still has a velocity of V. This object, uh, the ping pong ball before the collision, is not moving, so it's just zero, and then V2 after. So we can see what would be the speed of the ping pong ball. We can see that the ping pong ball is going to have a velocity of 2V, meaning it's going to go twice as fast. And this is a common thing you're going to see with elastic collisions, is when a tiny object hits a huge object, it's going to start moving a lot faster toward the right direction, or toward the direction it was hit, okay? So it's going to go twice as fast once it is hit by this huge object that's going a certain velocity. Let's look at another problem. This one's similar, but a little bit more difficult. A baseball bat has a velocity of v when it collides with a baseball that has a velocity of negative 2v. The bat barely changed velocity during the collision. How fast is the baseball going after it is hit? So again, we're going to look at the same thing. We're going to do V. We're going to call the baseball V1, uh, the baseball that V1, and this one V1 final. While the baseball is going to be, we're going to call that V2 and V2 final. So let's look again at this equation. V1 plus V1 final equals V2 plus V2 final. Again, the baseball bat pretty much doesn't change velocities after they're hit, uh, after the collision happens. And you'll see this in baseball all the time. When it hits the ball, it's not like the baseball bat goes backwards. You know, it still follows through and still goes as if nothing happened. Okay, you might notice a little bit of a change, but you don't really notice much of a change. But we know the baseball changes a lot. At the very beginning, it had a velocity of negative 2v, and we want to find what the velocity final is. So we see that this is going to be 2v, and then we add, and then negative 2v, v2f. So then we add this other 2v, and we see that after it's hit, it's going with a velocity of 4v. And this should make sense. If you guys have ever seen baseball, the faster it's pitched, the faster it's going to go when it's hit, as well as the velocity of the bat contributing to it. So it's going to be going four times the velocity once it's hit because this baseball bat is unaffected. Okay? Hope that made sense. Moving on. Uh, okay, last problem here. A uh, figure shows two battling robots on a frictional surface. Robot A with a mass of 20 kilograms, initially moving at two, 2 meters per second in the X direction. It collides with robot B, which has a mass of 12 kilograms, and is initially at rest. After the collision, robot A moves one meter per second in the direction that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the initial direction. What is the final velocity of robot B? All right, so let's look at this problem. And since we're doing this in 2D, let's think about the uh, momentum initial in the x direction and the momentum final in the x direction. So we have the 20 kilogram object going two meters per second to the right. So that's that. We have the 12 kilogram object that's initially at rest. So this is just zero. After the collision, we have this 20 kilogram object, and it's going one meter per second uh, with this angle of 30 degrees. But let's find what the Vx and Vy is uh, after it's hit. So if this is 30 degrees, that means one times sine of 30, that means it's going to be 0 0.5. And then one times cosine of 30 is going to give me 0.87 meters per second. Okay? So how we can do this, we know that after this hits, this first robot is going to be going 0.87 meters per second in the x direction. We don't know how fast the other robot is going 12 in the x direction. So let's find out how fast it's going to be going in the x direction. Uh, 40 minus 20 times 
seven divided by 12, and we see it's going to be 1.89 meters per second. So in the x direction, this robot is going to be going 1.89 meters per second. And it should make sense. It should go faster because this, again, is lighter. Okay? Oops. 1.89 meters per second. Okay, now let's look at the y. Momentum initial y equals momentum final the y. And we should see this 20 kilogram robot is actually not moving the y direction at all. So that's just going to be zero. The 12 kilogram object is just not moving at all. So it's just zero. But after the collision, the 20 kilogram object is going 0.5 meters per second in the y direction. And the 12 kilogram object, we don't know how fast it's going in the y direction. So let's see if we can figure that out. Divide by 12. And we should get around negative 0.83 meters per second. So then it's going to be negative 0.83 meters per second. And now we can find what this final velocity is. 0.83 squared plus 1.89 squared square root. We get 2.07 meters per second. And then we can also find this angle. The angle is going to be inverse tan opposite 0.83 divided by 1.89. And we should get around negative 23.7 degrees. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, next time we talk, we're going to talk about uh, center of mass. All right, so see you guys with that next chapter.